Stay tuned for the Splash Live. It's time for the Splash Live from Civic Center TV, featuring stories from and about people like you in the greater West Bloomfield area. Simulcast on cable, 89.3 Lakes FM, social media, and the web. Now live from Green Media Center on Walnut Lake Road, it's the Splash Live. Yes, live, local, and social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Good morning, I am Kevin McIntosh, your host for today. Looks like we are expecting a beautiful, great weather day today in the greater West Bloomfield area on this Monday. And it was pretty nice over the weekend too. The only thing that was a little bit wild was that Orchard Lake Road showdown between the West Bloomfield, uh, West Bloomfield Eaglets, I should say. Oh, I'm sorry, West Bloomfield Lakers and the Orchard Lake St. Mary's Eaglets. And our very own Dave Scott was out there on the court with the team checking out the game. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Good morning. Don't don't feel bad. I I'm just trying to think. What is the Cast Tech mascot? And for the life of me, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it's it's actually just a technician. <laughs> That's right, of course, the technicians. I knew that. All right. Um, yes, it was a great matchup mm -hmm. between the Lakers and uh, and Orchard Lake St. Mary on so many fronts. First of all, Lakeland uh, High School, um, a beautiful facility, was jam packed with fans. This was the district final on Friday night, and Orchard Lake St. Mary comes into the game highly uh, anticipated uh, to do very well in the tournament run this year. Uh, Mick McCabe of the Detroit Free Press, as we've said several times on our air, has picked Orchard Lake St. Mary to win the state championship. Mm -hmm. So West Bloomfield had quite a quite a, a game on their hands and quite a foe. Um, the uh, Orchard Lake Road Showdown, as we've called it, yeah. with these two schools so close to each other, um, it made for a great night. But it got off to a really tough start for the West Bloomfield Lakers as Orchard Lake St. Mary came out, put 10 points up on the board before West Bloomfield was able to score. West Bloomfield, early in the, early in the game, called a timeout, no big surprise. Um, and they pulled it back together, and the Lakers were able to come back and get, oh my, I think it was about 10 of their own, and uh, tie the game up. And then after that, it was a battle throughout the first half. Orchard Lake St. Mary uh, ending up uh, with a significant lead at halftime. The Lakers come back in the third quarter, scoring 14 points against Orchard Lake St. Mary's 18 points. But the Eaglets um, over the evening ended up being just too much. It was... You know, Kevin, it was, it was tough because um, the Lakers want to play a very up-tempo game. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've been doing all season. And, and that's the same game that the Eaglets play. And the Eaglets' defense was just devastating. Lakers are trying to drive the low post. Um, and it was just difficult for them to make their layups and find the open opportunities in the lane. Eaglets playing extremely tough on defense, and then they've got such an amazing offense that the Lakers could not compete. Um, as it turned out, the game finally ends, the final score, 68-46. to 46. But you look at that score, and you think about how um, exciting and physical of a game this was, mm -hmm. and it really doesn't tell the whole story. I asked Coach Todd Covert of the Eaglets if he felt the score really told the whole story. No, I, I, that was a closer game. That was a closer game. Um, you know, West Bloomfield played hard. You know, that was like uh, two, uh, two, two, two grade school kids fighting it out, man. It was just obviously in high school, but those, that's, uh, those kids will, 
Uh, they'll remember that for one for a long time. Well, you know, you said that when we talked about this a couple of nights ago, that's the kind of game we would have. You open up on a 10-0 terror, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then West Bloomfield fought right back. Mm -hmm. Talk about your emotions at that point of the game. Yeah, you know, they have four really good shooters, and then they got, you know, Keith, who is, you know, you know, he's as tough as there is in high school basketball. Um, and uh, you know, I give that kid a lot of credit. Whatever's wrong with his hand, I know it's not good. And that's one of the more impressive couple game performances I've seen. And I give that kid a lot of credit, man. He, he uh, cares about his school, cares about his team, and uh, give him a lot of credit. Tough for West Bloomfield when he was fouled out, um, you know, fouled out of the game. That's always tough for a senior. So uh, where do you go from here? Obviously off to the districts. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, we'll uh, we'll regroup tomorrow. Uh, we'll get together tomorrow and uh, see who we're going to play. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but it's a great win for our school. Um, but I give uh, West Bloomfield and Coach a lot of credit. He's class act. Kids, uh, you know, we got tangled up a couple times, but I, I don't think there was any malice or any. And just kids got tangled up, but I think those you know those kids are good friends, and you know they respect each other too. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a, that's a really polite way when he, when you know when when Coach Covert says they got tangled up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a politician at work there talking about um, you know how physical that game was, and it was physical. But listen. Orchard Lake St. Mary's has some unbelievable talent, including Trey McKenney. I think you have to say he's the rock star on the team. Mm -hmm. Scores 26 points last or on Friday night. Daniel Smith with uh, 17 points. Lakers leading scorers were Curtis Britton with 15 and Drew Wilson uh, with 13. I tried to talk to Drew after the game. Uh, you know, he was really in no mood to have a discussion. No one from the Lakers were. And and it just kind of gets back to the way, um, and we see it all the time, the way these tournament runs are. It's so heartbreaking and disappointing after winning your championship in your conference, mm -hmm. coming into a district, winning the first district game, and then you face somebody like Orchard Lake St. Mary. Looking at, looking at it from a West Bloomfield perspective, and, and no matter where you fall out of the tournament, at some point you fall out of the tournament and it's just heartbreaking. It's the end of so many things. It's the end of the campaign for the seniors, their last high school basketball game. And, you know, and it's just, you don't have, you, Kevin, you've been there, you've seen this and, you know, I don't play in these teams, but, you know, you don't really have any time to prepare. It's different on like senior night, right. which we covered recently on the girls' side, they know that's going to be the last home game they're going to play mm -hmm. of the season. They walk in knowing it. It just you know they they it, mentally you can get ready for it. I don't even as a fan, I just don't know how you prepare for a sudden death tournament loss. It's almost impossible. So it's always a little heartbreak that goes along with these games. Does that make sense to you? No, 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 absolutely. And, and I get in. We spoke to uh, Coach Jordan on the West Bloomfield side, and, you know, they, they had great momentum to kind of end the season, 12-game win streak, I believe. And it was great momentum, but, you know, it's it's unfortunate it happens like that. But, you know, that's, that's the luck of the draw. You know, someone has to win, someone has to lose. But, you know, congratulations and – all, uh, all, all luck to uh, Saint, uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, I should say. Excuse me. Absolutely. And they are going to continue their tournament run. Let me grab my notes here. They'll be playing Tuesday, Kevin, at Milford mm -hmm. in the initial um, regional game. Mm -hmm. And that one will be happening at 7 o'clock. And, you know, they're our neighbor. They're our friend. We'll all be cheering, of course, for the Eaglets. Yeah. But, Kevin... At every game, there are multiple stories, and I always look for the side story. And at this game, um, I had an opportunity to talk to the principal at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Bob Piles. Now, Bob, his wife, works in the West Bloomfield School District. Bob worked in the West Bloomfield School District for a long time. A lot of long-term West Bloomfield people know him very well. For several years, he's been the principal, headmaster, they call it there, the principal at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So it was a big night for him mm -hmm. emotionally. I mean, coaches know each other, players know each other, right. principals know each other. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Bob Piles after the game to talk about his emotions. 
Well, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, I tell you that. You know, I've, I've been in two, you know, a great place in West Bloomfield, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to go to St. Mary's, and I love it at St. Mary's, and so I, you know, I've just been real fortunate. I, I, I found two homes, and uh, I'm the luckiest guy. Well, and here in West Bloomfield, very interesting in the greater West Bloomfield area, we have these two amazing educational institutions that have great academics and amazing athletics, and it's athletics have brought us together tonight. Uh, you are correct. You are correct. I mean, you know, we're in a, we're in a really good situation, uh, you know, and we're really close to each other. And uh, it's, it's, they're two great ed educational uh, institutions. And, uh, uh, you know, and, they, and, and, and we do a good job, and, and they do a great job. So it's good. Do you miss being over in West Bloomfield? A lot of, from what I understand, a lot of people are missing you. No, no. I my my uh, wife works in West Bloomfield, so uh, you know I, I've got still got some ties to West Bloomfield. But uh, no, I'm I, I, no. I I've been gone about 14 years now, 15 years. So it, it, it's been a while. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add about the rivalry, the two schools, just anything in general about education? Any any you know, final thoughts? I know it's kind of open ended. But. Yeah, but you know it's really a it's really about the kids. And, um, you know, they, uh, both schools came out and really competed. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the score is really a lot closer than the score indicates, you know, uh, what, what, what occurred here. And it's just, it's just good to see the, the kids out playing, you know, so it's good. And really, you talk about the total experience with the, the students on the floor, the students in the stand. It really, there's, it, it was a beautiful night. Uh, it was. I mean, you know, uh, the uh, student sections really make it, uh, you know, and that's uh, one of the things in, uh, at St. Mary's that uh, is really a great thing is our student section, and I'm, I'm always looking forward to it. And uh, today we had two great student sections. It was, a it, was, it was a great high school game. It was a great high school game. And, Kevin, I, I screwed up. I should have recorded video of these two students, student sections because it was like a, a collegiate game. Like I was sitting at the Breslin or sitting, you know, in Ann Arbor watching two great college teams going at it. And their fans were going back and forth with all the cheers that you, you see at a collegiate uh, Big Ten college game. So, it was a great night. So moving on, uh, again, Orchard Lake St. Mary's will be playing tomorrow night in Milford. Game time, 7 o'clock. Uh, a lot of our shift from a basketball perspective moves over to the girls. They began their district uh, championship run here and all the way out to the state championship, we hope. Uh, Wednesday night, they're going to be at Farmington Hills Mercery, Mercy. And uh, that game kicks off at 5.30, a lot more sports. And, uh, hey, Kevin, one final thing. I just want to thank the people of West Bloomfield. What huge support Absolutely. for the girls' basketball program. That video package that I put together on senior night, it's had like 10,000 views, which, you know, I mean, I, I'm not, that isn't about me. That's about that program mm -hmm. and the amazing following that they have. And, and we wish them the very best of luck in their tournament run. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the love and the support that we get from the community is why we do this. We wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't be able to showcase the, the excellence of the team, of, of, the, of the school in general, if it wasn't for the community. So great turnout, West Bloomfield uh, and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Great job. All right, Kevin, that's all I got. Um, I suspect I'll be showing up at some more basketball games over the next couple of weeks. Back to you. Absolutely. Thank you, Dave Scott, checking in from uh, the Orchard Lake Road Showdown between Orchard Lake St. Mary's and West Bloomfield. We got more information that's going to help you throughout the day. That'll be coming up on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Good morning. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in Kego Harbor, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. One scorching heat wave will leave me powerless to cool my insulin. When the storm rolls in, my time to find a pet-friendly evacuation center will have run out. <laughs> I'm relying on luck. 
But who knows if it'll be on my side. When it comes to disasters and emergencies, it's not a matter of if, but when. Take control. One, assess your needs. Two, make a plan. Three, engage your support network. Let's prepare so we all have a better story to tell. I get around primarily by bicycle. That's how I get to work every day, except for when it's really rainy or snowing, then I take the bus. We take public transportation here to the senior center so that we, to volunteer. Usually just getting to and from classes at OCC or um, just for recreation, going out to shop at Somerset or explore downtowns like Royal Oak and Birmingham. Public transportation is about community. For more information, go to oakgov.com forward slash Oakland Transit. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Good morning, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. How you doing? I am Kevin McIntosh, your host for today. As we've seen the weather start to break a little bit into the spring, we're starting to see more people outside taking care of their homes, wash their car, regular maintenance, walk around as pedestrians, and enjoy our parks and trails. And with that, we want to make sure everyone is safe. And that's why we have included, or I should say West Bloomfield, Greater West Bloomfield, has included some new crosswalk signals for pedestrian safety. And joining us from West Bloomfield Park Superintendent, we have Chris Fry joining us to talk about that. Good morning, Chris. Morning, Kevin. How are you doing today? Doing just great this morning, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're talking about this new Hawk Crosswalk signal that has been installed uh, around West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake Road, and Indian Trail. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and what you know? Sure, sure. So these have been in the works for about three years. Um, a lot of uh, man hours, different people, different agencies uh, were involved in this. Um, but a lot of feedback from trail users over the years, this is going back five, six, eight years uh, on the West Bloomfield Trail, um, that uh, folks are interested, more interested in uh, safer travels. So we wanted to, in to invest in something that could properly do that for them. And it uh, led us down the road of the Hawk Lights. Um, these started popping up around some of the, the roundabouts around the township. And now we have uh, two of them, two brand new ones out on the West Bloomfield Trail. One at Orchard Lake, uh, just kind of northeast of Indian Trail, right in the S-curves there between the lakes, Pine Lake and Orchard Lake. Mm -hmm. And then we have one about another half a mile down the road, just south of Commerce, where the trail crosses the road again uh, at the corner of the St. Mary's property, between the St. Mary's property and the Pine Lake Golf Course. So uh, we finally got uh, the two installed uh, that we have been promising folks for the last couple of years. Uh, like I said, it was a big undertaking, a lot of time, a lot of, lot of paperwork, a lot of things involved in getting this done uh, through the county level, township level, Orchard Lake, city of Orchard Lake level, So, but they're finally done and operational. Got you. Okay, so that's good. We have two locations around West Bloomfield as of right now. And yes. what, what really makes this crosswalk signal any different from the traditional crosswalk we will see with the walk, don't walk signals on it? What makes this any different? Sure. Well, this is a little bit of that same stuff. Um, so basically, you walk up to this and press the button like you would a crosswalk signal. This will uh, alert the cars. Uh, so it'll start blinking yellow. It'll go to solid yellow. Uh, then red, stopping the cars, hopefully stopping the cars. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously you would look both ways. Uh, you know, don't think that this is just automatically stopping cars. Obviously, both, but look both ways before you're doing any kind of traversing over the roadway. Uh, make sure everybody stopped and then crossed. But um, these, these particular crosswalks also uh, can talk to you uh, if, you're, um, if you're seen impaired. Mm -hmm. So when you press the button, it tells you to wait until the crosswalk is ready. Um, it will, once it's ready, it'll, it'll voice command you to start going. Um, it will count down. Basically, there's a, there's, a, there's a speaker on either side of the crosswalk that's built into the push button. So it, it will tell you to go. It'll start, 
it'll start counting you down like a regular crosswalk does where you see the hand and then the timer. So the crosswalks are counting you down. And as you get to, towards the other side, you can still hear that number uh, of the countdown. So you know that you're, you're safely crossing that road there. So uh, not only is it uh, visually to the cars, visually to the people that are walking with the little white per the, the, the little white outline of the of the person walking and the red hand uh, but it also gives you a countdown and it's it has the voice uh, in, into it as well um, unlike a, a unlike a normal crosswalk where it's waiting for traffic um, you know you press the button at a crosswalk at a, at a traffic intersection you got to wait a couple of turns for traffic lights to, to be right. right this is kind of instantaneously you push the button and it and it signals the the whole uh, uh, crosswalk to start activating wow okay that's interesting so this is a lot more pedestrian oriented rather than traffic oriented it'll it'll pretty much just signal whenever the pedestrian is there and it'll just start to slow the traffic down is that what i'm getting from this Yes, yes. So you, it's the the all the lights are off and, unless somebody presses the button. Then when you press the button, overhead on the crossbar over the road, it'll start blinking yellow, um, solid yellow, and then solid red. And obviously at that point, cars are start. They've seen the yellow. They're starting to slow down. The, the red's coming. They're going to stop at the red again. Look both ways. Make sure mm -hmm. everybody stop, and then proceed with the cross. And then after the countdown, it flashes red to tell the vehicles, hey, I, we think everybody's out of the road. Everybody should be getting out of the road quickly if they haven't already. And then the lights will go off and then and then cars can go again. We have uh, West Bloomfield Park Superintendent Chris Fry joining us here on the Splash Live this morning, talking about the new Hawk crosswalk signals being installed around greater West Bloomfield. Um, do we see any more of these? Only two right now installed. Do we see more in the future being installed? Well, probably not in in on the seven and a half miles that the the commission, the West Bloomfield Township owns. Um, we have uh, the two on Orchard Lake Road. Back, uh, if you back up from uh, the 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 Orchard Lake and Indian Trail crosswalk, where we cross Orchard Lake Road about a half a mile before that. There's already been a traffic light there, and that's a regular traffic light. Um, you can also push the button, but it is a regular traffic light. It lets cars in and out of some shopping centers up on Orchard Lake Road, just south of uh, Pontiac Trail. Mm -hmm. So all three of our intersections where it crosses Orchard Lake Road now have lighting. Uh, another, a couple of our other uh, trail intersections have a different style of crosswalk. Um, you still press a button, but it just alternating a yellow light just to get cars attention, but it doesn't actually stop traffic. So it's a little different style. Mm. It's solar powered. Um, so we have one of those on our, on our other, uh, trail intersections where it crosses a, a main road, but our three main intersections on Orchard Lake Road are now covered with, uh, these type of lights. And they are putting these lights at a lot of other trail intersections when the open county road commission did this project uh this they started last fall doing the install and finished up this spring but they were they were under contract to do nine more uh crosswalks like this obviously not the township but in other townships but if you keep on going down orchard lake road after our last one uh it crossed the, the trail crosses orchard lake road again up in on the other side of sylvan kego and there's another one so they are uh, becoming more popular with the trail crossings uh all over the area good that's good to hear that it's being spread out amongst other communities we're setting the example and then other communities sure. are joining on too so that's great sure. to hear um so uh real quick before we go are there yeah. any other initiatives that are possibly being put into place for uh our community safety or can you tell people how they can reach out to you if they have any ideas for community safety public safety sure, sure. definitely our website and i was uh, i was going to tell you that we have a, a short uh, probably two minute video on our website, wbparks.org. Uh, on the new Hawk lights that are in the area, there's a, about a two minute video on uh, how they work, how how the how the pedestrian side of it works to press the button and wait for all the lights to activate, and then it'll tell you to go. And maybe a little helpful uh, to for the residents that are driving around to watch that video too. So on our website, two minute video on how the how the Hawk lights work as well. So check that out on our website. West Bloomfield Parks Superintendent Chris Fry joining us talking about the new Hawk crosswalk signals around the greater West Bloomfield area. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, Chris. We appreciate you. Thank you, Kevin. Absolutely.
And we have even more to discuss. There's local events going on as the spring slowly approaches. Make sure you stay right here on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in West Bloomfield, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. Everyone knows the BBB is the Better Business Bureau, but depending on what you need, it's the Better Plumber Bureau, the Better Auto Mechanic Bureau, the Better Accountant Bureau. That's because the BBB connects people with businesses they can trust. So think of the BBB as the better check that business out first so you don't get ripped off bureau. Be smart. Always look for the BBB seal because it's looking out for you. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Live, local, and social, it's The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. And now, back to The Splash, live! Good morning, welcome to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host, Kevin McIntosh. Good morning, and we are... We are exploring other options. If you are ever someone who feels like you need companionship and you're looking for a pet, there's not a necessary need to go buy a pet nowadays. There's so many pets around that need that love that are available for adoption, for an example. And we do have a local organization in the greater West Bloomfield area that is doing something about that and helping pets get foster parents. Representing Almost Home Rescue, or No Kill Rescue, we should say, joining us is Terry Rouse. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning on the Splash Live. So you represent Almost Home No Kill Rescue. Now there's a big emphasis on the No Kill part. Can you tell us a little bit more about the organization and the emphasis on the No Kill, please? Sure. We rescue dogs um, of all kinds. Um, we, we, we rescue them from um, either, either if they're strays or if owner surrenders or sometimes we help out local shelters who are overcrowded and don't have enough room to, to house them or we even take, um, we even help out rescues from other states that are overcrowded and we, we um, bring them in, give them loving homes in foster care. We don't have a shelter. Um, so everything, all the animals that we rescue go right into a foster home where they're loved and cared for. And we give them all the medical attention that they need, whether they need to be spayed or neutered, or if they have heartworm, we treat the heartworm or whatever the case may be. Sometimes there's an injured leg um, and we give them all the, the medical care that they need uh, and get them, get them ready to be adopted so that we can adopt them out to um, Metro Detroit citizens. Wow. Wow. So no shelter for these animals, but, but yet you're finding them, you're helping them, you're giving them the care that they need, and you're also helping to find foster parents for them. Can you just talk about the challenges that you face in that process? Like, are, are you getting animals quickly and turning them over quickly? How, how is that working for you? So um, just to speak to the shelter, we, we used to have a shelter uh, for about, uh, I, I don't know, about 10, 20 years. We had a shelter, maybe 15 years. And um, and then that business sort of uh, changed. We formed a different business model where we went uh, strictly to foster care. And why we like that so much is because they're in loving homes. They um, are not, you know, housed in a, in a building where diseases can spread. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, spending the night um, all alone in a crate. They're in loving homes. And so we find that to be a very um, 
very lucrative business model for the loving care of the dogs. Uh, the challenge is, yes, um, you know, we, we sometimes get an animal that we need a home for and we don't have a shelter to put them in. So we have to reach out quickly to our foster base via email. Sometimes it's personal phone calls just to locate that foster who's going to be able to take this dog in at the spur of the moment. So we rely heavily on the foster base and um, and we are really grateful for all the support we get from our fosters who are able to turn around like that really quickly. Love to hear that, too. And not only do you have dogs, but you also have cats, other animals, too, as well. Do you, What type of animals do you do you have? No, cats, but no other animals. Okay. Um, we, do have, we do have a couple of cats right now. I think we just adopted out or almost going to adopt out uh, a cat that we've had on our um, website available for adoption. So I think that one's getting set up right now to be adopted. Is that is that Kit Kat that I believe I saw on your Facebook? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Kit Kat was last. We had Spectre and Kit Kat. Yeah, Kit Kat I think is going to be adapted soon. Okay, nice, beautiful. I'm glad to hear that. So with with everything going on, um, essentially going back to the root of this, you're solving a problem. The problem is animal homelessness. What, from your research, what is the cause of animal homelessness and what all are you doing, like what other initiatives do you think can help with animal homelessness? Well, let's see, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes they're strays, right? So if they're strays, um, when we bring in a stray, we scan them for a chip. If, we, if there's no chip, then we can't reunite the dog to the owner. Mm. Um, so, so then we have to put them on social media and say, we've got this dog, you know, we found him here. You know, if this is your dog, please let us know. We have to hold them for seven days so that we can get the word out that this dog has been found. Oftentimes people, people do, do strange things where they just decide that they don't want the dog anymore and, and they don't want the, to be reunited with the dog. They're, they're intentionally getting rid of the dog in, in, in the way that they deem I don't know what they deem, but anyway, so we then, you know, take those dogs in, um, st stray cats, the way to cure stray cats is to get these cats spay and neutered. There's so many feral cats out there that keep reproducing. And I can't emphasize enough that these, if you, if you see a stray cat or a feral cat, um, you should try to figure out first if it has an owner and then we, there's low cost methods of getting them spay or neutered so that they don't reproduce again. Right. Uh, joining us this morning, Terry uh, Roush of Almost Home Animal Rescue, no kill animal rescue, I should say. Um, so what other ways can the community help if they maybe don't have the space to adopt or, or foster a pet of some nature? Or maybe they're allergic to a dog There's or a cat. What other ways can they help? So um, donations are great. Um, monetary donations or you know, um, we have an Amazon wish list. We can always use volunteers. When we do large shelters, we, we excuse me, large um, rescue missions, about every other month or so, we we rescue a large truckload of dogs from various sh um, shelters that are overcrowded. We have lots of need for our volunteers to help out with the logistics. When the when the truck comes in with these dogs, we we get, you know, we, we take them out of the van, we um, move them directly from that to, having them have a potty break and maybe a liquid um, refresh them with some water. And then they go into foster homes, foster cars that we have lined up in the parking lot. We just take them right from the truck into the foster care. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the process starts from there with the vetting and, and, and so forth. So there's the volunteering is, is important too, um, whether it be those large rescues or um, we have things that we can do in the office. We have events that we need staffed. Uh, sometimes there are awareness events, sometimes there are fundraising events. So lots of things that people can do to get involved. And Terry, if you don't mind, I, I kind of want to know your reason. What's your why into why you joined this program, why you're a part of it, and why you want to help? Years ago, I adopted from Almost Home Animal Rescue, um, and she passed away last year. But I became um, um, regularly involved with Almost Home about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And really, I mean, you can ask any one of my team. I absolutely love doggies. I mean, when one comes to the office, I am on the floor playing with that dog. I just absolutely love them. I I attack dogs on the street when I'm going for a walk so I can pet them and love them up. Um, I just absolutely love dogs. I, I, I haven't had a cat in my life, but I think they are just beautiful. And I also love them. So I just want to do everything I can to help them have a happy, loving, carefree life. 
Absolutely. And, and we need people like you. We need organizations like Almost Home to help these animals, these dogs and these cats that are out here that may be suffering from homelessness or whatever the case may be, or just just need care overall because you know it, it's not it's not every day that you you have an animal that that is getting the care that they need and things of that nature so we appreciate having you on thank you so much for joining us and one last can you tell people how they can reach out if they want to adopt volunteer donate or whatever the case may be please sure our office phone number is 248 200-2695 or there you go on the bottom of the website, there's the, on the bottom of your screen there, that's our um, web address, almosthomeanimals.org. And um, you can send an email to info at almosthomeanimals.org. So there's three ways you can get in touch with us. Absolutely. Join us on the Splash Live, Terry Rouse of Almost Home, No Kill Animal Rescue based here in West Bloomfield. Thank you so much for joining us, Terry. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Have a great day. We have so much more in store for you specifically. If you're looking for things to do around the area, we have that for you. Stick around on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. what people are watching in Kego Harbor. Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I get around primarily by bicycle. That's how I get to work every day, except for when it's really rainy or snowing, then I take the bus. We take public transportation here to the senior center so that we, to volunteer. Usually just getting to and from classes at OCC or um, just for recreation, going out to shop at Somerset or explore downtowns like Royal Oak and Birmingham. Public transportation is about community. For more information, go to oakgov.com forward slash Oakland Transit. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? What people are watching in Sylvan Lake. Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the Splash Live. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host Kevin McIntosh joining you here today and the West Bloomfield Police Foundation held their annual fundraiser to support first responders and their families specifically in case any of our police officers, firefighters or other first responders come into a situation where they cannot fend for themselves or no longer work I should say and they need someone to care for their family or their family needs that support so this fundraiser is specifically for that and they recently had that and we had the Splash Lives very own Tyler Keith visit them at the fundraiser to learn more about their mission. Just a few miles down the road in nearby Commerce Township, many came out to strike a few pins and spare a few dollars at the local bowling alley all in support of our police and other local families. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation is a nonprofit, and its main goal and mission is to serve the families of the police and fire communities, as well as the families and the stakeholders in the greater West Bloomfield community in times of need. We help not only police officers in our department, but we help police officers throughout the county and state. So fallen officers uh, will help assist their families, so forth, if they um, you know, need it, they reach out to us. You know, when the schools would get ready to start back up, we would uh, 
fund backpacks and help stuff those. And we adopted so many families over the years during the holidays. And again, they didn't necessarily have to be associated with the police or fire departments. It was a matter of this foundation was the public safety officers and professionals of West Bloomfield Township that wanted to serve the community. It's just nice that we can provide things to community members. And a lot of times they're shocked that the police department is assisting and things like that it's uh so we're just trying to um you know show that we are human also and that we do care you know about people that mantra to protect and serve goes beyond just the safety aspect of serving your community it's stopping at lemonade stands it's sitting at bus stops when kids are walking it's also being involved in the schools serving on other boards you know a lot of the police officers are actually involved on their own time doing things that help support the school district and, and other great initiatives and then as well as to help and support families when they have crisis and no one is immune to things happening to them. This is our uh, biggest found or fundraiser of the year. Fortunately, we have uh, headline sponsors such as Belfour Property Registration and Varsity Ford that has kicked in to help us. Um, and it also helps bring the community together, police officers together, and uh, we raise funds for our mission to continue our mission. And I think we'll never truly know the impact. We would get thank yous from many families. I think especially when they didn't ask for the help in the first place and either a family member or a friend or a neighbor or someone in the community reached out on their behalf and shared the need and it's the gift you didn't even ask for. And as we know as just human beings, those are the best gifts. There are a number of ways you can support the West Bloomfield Police Foundation all throughout the year. Charity events, fundraisers, and so much more, all of which you can find on WBPoliceFoundation.org. At Wonderland Lanes in Commerce Township, I'm Tyler Keeft, Civic Center TV. Thank Just you, a few Tyler. miles down the road. Thank nearby you, Tyler. Congress. We appreciate that information in regards to the West Bloomfield Police Foundation helping those families in need. Keeping it local, speaking of West Bloomfield, West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation recently received high honors at a state conference. This was actually last week in Kalamazoo at the M Parks Michigan Recreation and Parks Association Conference. Now, there was a lot of things going on. People learned new skills, networking, uh, generated ideas, just connected dots with each other. But specifically, West Bloomfield Parks received two awards, the 2024 Innovative Programming Award and the Outstanding Marketing Award specifically for their website design. Clearly it makes things easier, uh, easy user interface, and they've been awarded and recognized for that. So you can learn more about that at wbparks.org or visit them on Facebook at wbparks. And we still will keep everything local right here on the Splash Live, so we got a lot more to tell you. Make sure you keep it right here on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Live, local, and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.
on cable and the radio, on the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the Splash, live. Good morning, gorgeous. This is the Splash Live on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host, Kevin McIntosh. We want to talk about local students at Chico Elementary School doing something historic. They actually brought history to life with the, a wax museum project that they had. And this is very interesting when I saw this. It reminded me of some things that we used to do in school also. It was basically all the students researched historical figures and they would dress up as them, bring them to life, tell their stories, tell their stories in person as well as have images and displays to talk about their life so people could walk around and view it. It was very interesting. They had all different types of uh, people who have achieved great things. Uh, Michael Jordan, Serena Williams, uh, Harriet Tubman, Jackie Robinson. It was just, it was great to see the kids looking back on history, looking back on the things that they've achieved and embodying that entire character. So that was interesting. You can check out more on their Facebook at West Bloomfield Schools on their Facebook. And we're only about 17 days away from the official start of spring, if I'm not mistaken, on March 21st. But that's not stopping anyone from making sure they bring spring early, specifically in Kego Harbor. The Dairy Queen is officially open. Oh, what a time, right? You can check it out on Orchard Lake Road. It is out there. It is open. It will be open Monday through Friday. 3 to 9 p.m. and on weekends it'll be 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Go out there and check out all the flavors. Sit down and catch it on one of these great days. You know the line may be long early, so go out there early and grab me a cup of that caramel cheese quake blizzard. Mm, I get it every single time. But we got a lot more to talk about besides just ice cream and everything will stay here local in the greater West Bloomfield area. So make sure you stay with the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking, now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead, catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Good morning, happy Monday. It is The Splash live on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host, Kevin McIntosh. One thing we do enjoy about being outside is mobile food trucks coming up to local events that we can go out and enjoy different foods and different activities at that event. And there's a great big town hall meeting, the West Bloomfield Township meeting, I should say, tonight. Monday, March 4th, where they will be discussing 
mobile food vendors and things that could affect them. So joining us here uh, from West Bloomfield, mobile food carrier, the great Greek, we have Carrie Mayberry joining us. How are you, Carrie? I'm very well. How are you? Doing just fine, Carrie. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule. So you are the one of the managers for the catering and mobile food services for the Great Greek based in West Bloomfield. And you all were one of the first fully licensed mobile food trucks in the West Bloomfield area. Can you talk a little bit about that? Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We have been using um, what, or working with West Bloomfield Parks to uh, have our food truck there for the last several years. And this year they launched a new application process. And um, I mean, we do work all over the state. So I'm very used to having to do a lot of different types of things for applications. Theirs is a little bit um, different. They're the first place that I've had to do a bond for, but you can get that through your insurance typically. So it was worth it though. I keep track record of all of our um, sales and working with West Bloomfield Township. Um, and within there, we've made a lot of uh, good events. And so the revenue is worth it for getting the bond and doing the application process. Yes, absolutely. So I, I learned a little bit about this uh, as I was doing my research. There is a process if you want to be a mobile vendor in a, a West Bloomfield area. There's a process with getting a, you still have to pay a license fee. You have to have insurance and, uh, of course, license and you have to get inspected. But one thing about that meeting uh, tonight with West Bloomfield Township is the like you mentioned before, the performance bond five hundred dollars on top of everything else that you have to pay can you talk about how that performance bond has affected you and or has affected or will affect uh future businesses that are mobile trucks i should say excuse me yeah so i mean if you are getting it you're really only paying a hundred dollars up front um mm. and then it bonds you for 500 um if you have good events that you know you're doing in West Bloomfield, it's fine. It's not going to really hurt you. But if you're a newer company and you don't know how to jump through all those hoops, um, that's where it could, like, we could get see less mom and pop owned um, food trucks in the area just because if you don't have the knowledge that maybe our company has and understand how those things work, you might be deterred from app applying for the, the city. Right. And to my understanding, they're actually uh, uh, meeting tonight to vote on whether or not they're going to waive that five hundred dollar performance bond, which is which is going to open it up if they do take that away for the smaller mobile businesses that want to join this community and do different things like that. How do you feel like the remaining uh, restrictions and requirements that they have outside of the performance bond strikes a great balance between maybe food safety and supporting local businesses? Yeah, I mean, so I think it's always good to make sure that all the trucks are insured, um, making sure that any small local business has their insurance, has their fire safety, has either an STFU or their inspections done. That's really going to help you make sure that the food that you're receiving from them is good. People can't just own a food truck. It's an entire business and it is a lot of work and there's a lot of licensing that goes into it. And that should all be visible. So I feel like whenever you're doing an application for a city or a county, they should require that. Um, it takes a lot of money and time to get all of those steps done. And I feel better eating at food trucks knowing that they've done that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with this being in place, or, or I should say with them meeting tonight to possibly waive that $500 performance fee, you can see a lot more competition out there also. So what are your plans and initiative going forward if this does get waived? Do you have any uh, future events that you will be going to that you can tell us about also? Um, yeah, so we, like I said, we work with the West Bloomfield Parks. So we are doing all of the Marsh Bank Parks concert series this year. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been the sole truck that did all of them last year as well. And we had done them in the past previous to that. Um, and they're great events. And they're at the Marsh Bank Music um at Marsh Bank Park, and they're really fun. But we also do stuff at the Splash Pad. We do their movie nights. Um, and you can't apply for any of those events unless you apply through the city. And a lot of cities and a lot of counties have rules like that, and that's part of 
being a food truck business and you have to understand that. And those are great events. That's that's how you connect with the community. We're a small business, so we we feel like it's there's a lot of value in there. Um, we have uh, Carrie Mayberry from Great Greek uh, Mobile Food Services joining us here today on the Splash Live. Let's speak hypothetically real quick, uh, Carrie. Let's say the township approves to waive that $500 performance fee completely. And moving forward, we have more businesses joining. What advice would you give to small businesses or new mobile businesses joining a, waiter, a greater West Bloomfield area with that new fee being waived? Ooh, advice. Okay, so I would tell them apply early, um, be responsive, um, look at every event and make sure that there's value in it for your truck. Um, I I want more competition because when there's more competition, that means that you get better business and um, people more people are willing to come out because there's more of a supply and they're not just seeing the same truck all the time and getting bored. So I would I would advise them to um, follow up, do the applications, and and then track their numbers so that they can attend all these fun events. Right, right. And the important thing is, even though this five hundred dollar bond performance or performance bond it will, could possibly be waived, there is still a two hundred dollar licensing fee that they should be paying attention to. Correct. Yeah, there's a two hundred dollar licensing fee. Um, the fire inspection. So there are things that they have to do and make sure, but they'll have to do that anywhere they work. So they should be already having a lot of those done. Absolutely. And talking a little bit about the West Bloomfield Township meeting tonight about mobile food vendors and how it could affect them. We have Carrie Mayberry from the Great Greek join us. Thank you so much, Carrie, for your time. We appreciate you. Thank you. We have so, so much more to come up. So make sure you stay with us on the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in West Bloomfield, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I use public transportation almost every day. We take public transportation here to the senior center so that we, to volunteer. When you say, I don't need a bus, I have a car. What about your neighbor? What about your family member? What about your mother, your grandmother? How are they getting to medical appointments? Who's helping them? For more information, go to ogov.com forward slash Oakland Transit. Finding a reputable business shouldn't require luck or chance. But how can you tell who you can trust? Pro tip, the BBB connects people with businesses they can trust. So think of the BBB as the better, check with the BBB first because better businesses are honest and commit to high ethical standards bureau. That's why they're better. Always look for the sign of a better business and find a better business anytime at BBB.org. And now, back to The Splash, live. Good morning, happy Monday. Welcome to The Splash, live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host, Kevin McIntosh, joining you today. If you're looking for things to do, get out of the house a little bit. We have a few things going on we want to tell you about. Well, not we specifically as in The Splash Live, but we as in the community do. And specifically, we have Sylvan Lake game night that will be coming up this upcoming wednesday that'll be at the sylvan lake community center wednesday at 6 30 and as a matter of fact it'll be weekly every wednesday at 6 30 throughout the rest of the year at least until further notice they have uh, uh card games board games if you're bored get out and play and ukra i was just informed today i'm today years old knowing how to pronounce that so ukra they have that. I believe my producer is correcting me, but you can check that out. Find out all the games that they have going on as well as the schedule at sylvanlake.org for future game nights and other activities. If you want more things to do outside of that, make sure you mark your calendars. There's a Veterans Resource Fair coming to West Bloomfield. We spoke about this recently also. This will be May, uh, March 14th, excuse me, March 14th 
which I believe is a Thursday. It is a Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. It is at the Parks Connect Senior Center on 14 Mile and, Far and Farmington and West Bloomfield. It's available for our veterans to come get free food boxes. Uh, Oakland Community Health Network will be there. Oakland County veterans will be there also. A lot of resources. If you as a veteran need help or you know someone who needs help, make sure you pay this a visit. You can also check them out at wbparks.org slash veterans fair or check them out on Facebook at OakGov for upcoming veterans information. Keeping things going on, St. Patrick's Day is approaching. And if you're looking for something to do, check out St. Patrick's Day at West Bloomfield Parks. Specifically, March 15th, which is a Friday, 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. at the Connect Senior Center. Also, they'll have St. Patrick's Day lunch, entertainment, games. I believe they'll have the Motor City Irish Dance Team out there also, so you can enjoy that. There is a slight cost, but you can find out more about that at wbparks.org or Facebook at wbparks also. So much more going on in the greater West Bloomfield area, but we have so much more to talk about, and we will talk about it throughout the week. I'm Kevin McIntosh, your host for today. Thank you for watching the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Good morning.